Hello and welcome to my channel. So today I'll be building my second PC and this PC will be specifically, no not really, built for FSX, oh sorry not FSX, MFS. This is my MFS PC build. Microsoft Flight Simulator PC build. Alright, uh, you know, just standard PC build featuring the AMD uh, 3500. 3600, okay, never mind. Yeah, 3600. For our motherboard, we have the B450 Aorus Pro Wi Fi board. Uh, graphics card, very important, is the EVGA 1660 Super. Uh, first, my first uh, Nvidia card, pretty dope. Uh, we have 16 gigabytes of Corsair. 32 megahertz RAM, uh, yeah, 32 megahertz. Um, this, oh, this is the, this is a 240 gigabyte uh, SATA drive, SATA SSD. Yes, MFS and FSX will go on this particular drive. Uh, my boot drive is going to be the. Uh, Western Digital NVMe M.2 500 gigabytes drive. Uh, oh, and our case is going to be. Whoops, why is this here? The case is going to be the NZXT H510. And we have two drives there, which I ported over from my old PC. Um, I almost forgot that I had to open up my old PC to get these drives, and man, it was. Traumatizing opening that PC. Anyway, those are the parts. Why is this here? Those are the parts. Let's get to the build. So the Ryzen 5 3600 comes with its own with a cooler, and the cooler has pre-applied thermal paste. So very excited I don't have to put additional thermal paste. Alright, the cooler is in this box, the CPU is here, and in warranty. Huh, okay, so I was right, I was, when I opened this board, I mean, when I took the box out of the, when I got the box, the box felt open, and I think this is an RMA board, and... I guess I'm right, there is no CPU socket cover here. Which is strange. It would be very disappointing if this build does not work because my CPU is my motherboard is busted. Um Yeah, the one thing I could do now is keep going and hope for the best. The manual does say that the go triangle is here. So before I do anything, I'm going to touch my C my NZXT case to discharge any static electricity I have on my body. Um, I don't have an anti static wrist strap. Oh, actually, check it out. I do. So I'm going to pick it up from the sides. I'm sure not to touch any of these beautiful gold pins. Right. Right, that works. And then I can just Right. CPU successfully installed. Let's install the cooler now. Beautiful. And here is our pre-applied thermal paste. I'm not going to, not going to uh, mess around with that. Right, let me turn this motherboard around so I can see it properly. All 
right the ah shite I was supposed to remove these brackets first yeah let me do that quickly right now all right so we have the these clips removed let's install our CPU fan also make sure that your black your backplate is still on because you don't want that to go anywhere uh, right, so this seems to be mounted like this with the AMD logo that way. Right, and now I have the cable, this the this fan cable, the CPU cooler cable routed. Does not look too bad. So now let's install. My RAM. Now RAM is very tricky in that you need to ensure that a particular kit of RAM is compatible with your specific uh, motherboard and your CPU architecture. I learned that the hard way with my first PC that I've built which is in the Node 304. I really do not like that case, but it's whatever. All right, I'm going to install my M.2 drive up here. Ah, I think this is thermal paste or some sort of heat sink thermal spreader. Mm. Let's keep that screw close. Ah, I have a ma magnetic spark tree. NVMe SSD. Now if it wasn't for this drive, I probably would not have decided to build a whole new PC. I just would have updated the RAM and graphics card of the old PC. But if I had to install this drive on my old PC, I would have to take out the motherboard. And to take out the motherboard, I would have to unplug everything and take out everything, including the power supply. So with that logic, I thought, hey, might as well just build a whole new PC if installing this drive would require me to build a whole new PC. That's my logic. Right. Boom. Okay. And then I suppose, all right, M.2 drive installed. Not bad at all. All right, what else do we have to do on this motherboard? Nothing else. Oh, look at that. Inside here, you can see USB 3.0, USB 2.0, uh, TPM, whatever that means, 12 volts GRBGW. This is for RGB. This is pretty dope, pretty dope. All right. This is all set. Uh, let's prepare the case now. I'm going to stop the videos on the two angles, re readjust if necessary, and then we'll start back. We'll continue. All right, so I have prepared the case um, by removing the front and the back panel, the front, the back panel, and the side panel. And looking around, and I just realized that over here, Towards the front of the case, there are no fans. Um, this NZXT H510 would have the would have a side grill on the side here for air intake, which is nice. I mean, not really, but I have no fans in front here. I have an exhaust fan over here, and I have uh, another exhaust fan here. Um, I'm not too. So that means this is going to be a negative pressure build. I know you guys are going to roast me for this, but I'm just acknowledging the fact that I know, you know, this is going to be a negative pressure build. And as soon as possible, because I have no money right now, I will install some fans in the front there. So, yeah. Oh, let's... Ooh. What is this? NZXT? 
There's a little goodie bag here. Let me take the case off the table. All right, let's have a look, see what's in here. What's in the box? All right, instructions, H510, H510i. We have some uh, tweezers. We have 3.5 millimeter audio splitter. This is head headphone and microphone combo jack, uh, which is pretty cool. We have a lot of screws. And we also have, what is this? This looks like a uh, combo adapter thing. Combo splitter. I don't think we would need this. PLED, power switch, HDD LED. I'm not sure if we're going to use this because I think the motherboard came with one of these. Uh, where did I put it? I'll have to see, but I'm pretty sure the motherboard came with something like this. That is a much smaller and more elegant solution. Alright, so right now we are going to prepare the power supply. Uh, this power supply is the EVGA uh, 500 watt bronze power supply. Uh, sorry, semi-modular power supply. So that means that I won't have a rat's nest of cables in my build. Even though this build is sufficiently sized, so it won't be a rat's nest cable, but my first PC build in the uh, Fractal Design Node 304, that that is a rat's nest. I traumatizing. Can't believe I made that. Ooh, can't believe I did that for my first PC build. That is. Would not recommend. Ah, right. For a moment I almost forgot how these things work. Let's put that away. Nice. Oops. This is supposed to be the other way around. Cool. One set of instructions to go with a whole bunch of different uh, power supplies. Here are our cables. This is our graphics card cable, we'll be needing that. This is a SATA power cable. Um, how many SATA drives do we have? We have three SATA drives, so we need three of these. Uh, Molex, get rid of that. Uh, this is another SATA. Oh, it even says it on here. SATA, that's two SATAs. We have a power and this is attached all right what is this velcro tied on and we have a box of screws so that's sad we only have two SATA cables and we have three SATA drives so I'll learn to live with it I suppose put that moldex back put this back Another great thing about this power, this power supply is that all of the cables are black. Nice. Alright, so we're going to plug. Oh, okay. So we only have, we only had two SATA connections on this power supply in the first place. We could not have put three SATA cables in there anyway. That is a bit sad, but here's what it is. Right, SATA. Let's, you know, we let's undo our tweezers. All right, all of our cables have been prepared. Let's undo these massive tweezers for the CPU power and the uh, EPS power. CPU and EPS is that the same thing? I doubt it. Let me check. Ah, it's not named. We have the 24 pin. And we 24 plus 4. And we have CPU power. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Um, let's undo this cable now. Cool. 
cool. And we're gonna plug this in after I put the keys, put the power supply into the keys. Right, keys going fan down. Since we have access to the back of the H510, um, doesn't leave this off for now. Doesn't really matter. In my fractal node 304, you definitely have to turn this on before you close the keys. All right, so the power supply has been successfully added to installed in the case. Now I'm going to route the wires slash pre-bend them so that they can come out here on the motherboard. Uh, now that I'm looking at the case properly, I can see that I already have some motherboard standoffs installed. Uh, oh my god, I think this whole this camera angle was crooked the entire time. Let me go fix that. Um, no, I'm going to route cables first. Route cables first. Then I'm going to fix the camera angle. Ah, okay, where are you guys? Hello. So I just looked at the end of my SATA cable and the SATA cable, one SATA, one SATA power cable has one, two, three connectors on it. So I can install all three of my SATA drives on one cable actually, so that's pretty good. I am very surprised and kind of very happy about this new turn of events. Uh, I'm going to refer back to my NZXT box and get my screws so I can screw in my SSD and my other SATA drives uh, while I'm back here. Uh, I don't think you guys really want to see this so I'm just going to cut until all the drives are installed and then we're going to put in the motherboard. Alright, I'm back. I have mounted my uh, by flight simulator SSD and I've mounted my other uh, two and a half inch drive and I have also mounted my uh, what do you call it oops my my uh, two terabyte Seagate Barracuda drive and I have also pre-attached my SATA power cables and my SATA data cables um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I would have a hard time dealing with the SATA power cables and the data cables while the drives are attached. So while I while they were deattached, I routed cables and I put it in. Very boring process. You guys would have to see that. Uh, yeah, so drives are attached. Um, now let's install my the motherboard. See how well that goes. And after our motherboard installation, we're going to attach the front panel connectors, the power cables, and then hopefully reboot. Let's get on with it. Alright guys, now it is time to install the motherboard and graphics card and then plug up everything. So now to install the These are the screws I will be using that came with the uh, NZXT keys. Right here is oh you can see me. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to look at the motherboard and look at the case. Make sure I have uh, standoffs in the right places. All right, two screws over there. Screw over here. Uh, this motherboard has an integrated back plate. So, uh, sorry, integrated I/O shield. So, no embarrassment in this build. Oh, this does not feel right. Okay, my fan is very tautly cable managed. So, I don't think I'm going to remove that cable management. I'm going to find a way to prop up the fan. Alright, I'm going to look for a more elegant solution to prop up the fan while I install the motherboard. Alright, bamboo skewer. So let's put the fan up like this. Ta-da! Now it's out of the way. Kind of, sort of. Let's try reinstalling the fan now. Reinstalling the motherboard. That's what I meant to see. Oh, 
right there we go it's lined up and where is my screws all right these screws all right so this there's a center peg here that you absolutely need to line up then once this peg is in everything else lines up if you're having issues removing the motherboard from the uh from the case you have most likely caught the integrated io shield on the back of the case uh be very careful when you're trying to pull that out because you don't want to fully separate the integrated uh io shield from the motherboard shit all right motherboard is installed fan has been reinstalled and man so far so good uh what next um first we're going to wire up the case we're going to plug everything in that needs to be plugged in including power and sata then we're going to put our motherboard on oh uh, sorry then we're going to put our graphics card in <sighs> very excited for that all right so this has been installed so we have cpu power up here ATX power there. What else do we need? Uh, front panel cables would probably be a good idea. And then we can plug up our SATA cables. Alright, I have routed everything that I could have routed on the other side. Uh, this is still loose. This is my USB 3.0, my USB Type C connector. And, but there's no USB Type-C connector on my motherboard, which is very sad. I would have loved to use this USB Type-C port because I have a USB Type-C dongle. Uh, anyway, now it's time to put on the side panel. And then we install the graphics card and hopefully we boot. Alright, so I have cable managed the graphics card power cable uh, I didn't have to take off the side panel but I did and I put it back on no issue all right let's do this nice all right that seems to be it let's put this away do not enter without proper electricity equipment okay just touching, putting my hand on the computer case, just in case I had some static buildup. All right, all right. Nice. All right, this is the graphics card. Remove protective film before. Oh, let's also remove this. Don't know why it wasn't on all the way when I open the card. Let's remove this. Ta da! Alright, time for the peel. Uh, find me a corner. Yep. No. Nice. It also has the GeForce GTX Super. Okay, this is very unsatisfactory, I'm sorry. Alright, well, it's something. Alright, so here we are. These are the cables that I routed. Uh, I hope they can reach. 
Yeah, they shouldn't be able to reach. Alright, I already removed the whatever these things are called that go here when I was installing the motherboard. So let's just install the card now. Uh gonna open open up the latch for here. Gonna install it on the top the top PCIe uh thingy. Oh nice, we even have a back back plate too. Oops. This has to be removed too. Alright. Whoa. So do I reinstall this? I don't know. I should probably install the screws. I reinstall this. I don't want to lose this. Alright. Graphics card has been installed. That's... I don't know what to say that anymore, man. That was a lot easier than I expected it to be. Alright. Um, everything... I think everything has been installed. We're just missing two fans in front here, which I don't have. Our front panel, uh, USB Type C connector. Our motherboard does not have a Type C connector, so that panel will be inoperable. Yeah. All right. Let's go plug her into the wall and see if she boots. I'm going to leave the side panel off because it is bad luck to put on your side panel before your, your system has posted and all that good stuff. So I'm going to leave the side panel off for now. Now let's go to the computer. Alright. Oops. Alright, so we are at my table. Uh, here is the PC here. Uh, this is not going to be its permanent place. I'm going to put it on the floor so that I could have some more space on my desk. Uh, we have everything hooked up. Power supply is on, I think. I'm going to double check all my connections and then we're going to see if the system posts. Alright. Everything seems to be EOK -okay so far. Let's hit the power button and see if she boots. Nothing. Let's try that again. Let's make sure our power supply is turned on. Alright, let's try that again. Alright, fans are spinning. The motherboard case badge thing is lit. The bottom there. I don't see anything on the screen as yet though, which is a bit concerning. Ah, there we go. Uh, delete. Whoops. I was too slow. Alright, that makes sense. It says um, reboot and select a proper boot device. Alright, so let's turn off. Alright, the PC is off. Then we're going to turn on. Going to hit delete. BIOS has been reset. Okay. Ooh, my DPI on this mouse is super low. Is that time accurate? Oops, that's... Uh, that time there is about two minutes fast. Uh, let me 
readjust the camera angle so you guys can see the screen better all right camera angle has been switched uh, let's go system nice bios boot option one oh okay no 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 that's how do we change enter so my boot option one I want it to be the WD whatever boot option two I'm not sure what this drive is this is the edata SSD which I'm going to be using as the um, as the flight sim drive and this is my Toshiba drive oh this this P1 this P1 is most likely the um, the 2 terabyte Seagate drive alright alright that has been saved peripherals chipset power save and exit now I think it's gonna try and boot from the uh, WD drive which has nothing on it yeah okay so I'm going to restart the system again this time I'm going to add this drive which has windows on it and we install let's see F12 F12 boot menu did that work? Ah, I guess it is working. Hey, Windows. All right. Next, install now. I don't have a product key. Windows 10 Pro. I accept. Oh, my, my DPI is high now. Uh, custom install. Drive 3. Okay, it seems like Drive 3 is the 500 gigabyte um, NVMe drive. This is my 2 terabyte drive. That is the other drive. And that is a partition, so let's install here. It's full. Next. Progress. progress yeah progress booted on the, on the first try well actually not the first try the second try the first time 
the power supply button was turned off. So I turned it on and it booted first try. Nice. Alright, the PC has just restarted. I think all the files have... Oh, do I need to unplug this? I am not sure. We will see. This is quite interesting. Alright, progress. Let's see, United States, unfortunately. Sorry that it defaults to US. What's the right uh, keyboard layout? Yes, the US again. Uh, skip. Uh, how about we don't connect? I don't have internet. We don't have internet. We do have internet. Oh, okay. This is me. So yeah, yeah. Alright, let's see then. Hey, can I skip this? I want to skip this. Can I skip this? Ah. Uh, I wanted to skip this. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. No. 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 Is that it? Is that anything I'm missing? Well, seeing that this is uh, Microsoft, I'm pretty sure there are more stuff that I can't say no to, but take what little power you have, I guess. Uh, no. No. Hi. That is so cute. I love it when I see that. We're getting everything ready for you. That is always so cute. Just like, hi. Right, this might take several minutes. Don't turn off PC. we have booted into Windows and first of all let's change our di resolution uh, display oops yes keep changes ah oh, that is so beautiful all right oops let's do this really quickly Alright, look at that. Can you see that? It is already yoink. Um, let's turn on the autofocus on the lens. Well, if you can't see that, that says AMD Ryzen 3 3600, 6 core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, D, E, Why is my C drive all the way down there? Oops, let's remove that. Alright, well, that's it. Well, this is awkward. So, 
I recorded an original outro um, in the same setup as the rest of the video and then I put the table back, I took down my lights, I cleared up my room, I did some cable management on the here, I took my PC off the desk and put it on the floor, I went to edit and there's no outro so here we are on the floor doing an outro. Alright, so during the edit, I did a quick edit before the video was totally done. I realized that when I plug in my camera's dummy battery to a power strip and I have a light going on the power strip, I would get some noise. So the audio from this, the audio right now is going to be good because I don't have a light plugged in. I don't have a light plugged in to the same power strip as the camera so sorry about that I learned something new all right uh, what else oh yes I was I was right in thinking that the motherboard was used I mean I'm not 100% confirmed but I'm pretty confirmed pretty sure the box was not sealed when I got it the motherboard box was not sealed the, there was no uh, socket cover on the motherboard and the integrated IO shield was a bit loose and when I was trying to install the motherboard that kept on getting snagged on the, in that little, in the cutout for the IO shield, the integrated IO shield got snagged in that uh, cutout area there. Um, this motherboard also does not have an in, an internal USB Type 3 header. There is a Type 3 header on the IO back panel, but there is no internal USB Type 3. So the Type 3 connector on my front panel of the case will be inactive. Yes, much sad about that. Um, oh yes, another issue with the motherboard. This awful yellow light right here and right up there. I mean, I would have preferred if Gigabyte had that light cycling through the RGB color spectrum instead of this awful yellow light. I would probably have to install Gigabyte software to change that light or just turn it off completely, which I will most likely do because I'm not really a fan of RGB. Alright, if you want to see all of the parts I use inside of this build be sure to check out the kit.com link in the description if you buy anything off of kit well not off of kit if you go to kit and you click on a link and then you go to amazon and buy something i would get a small commission not from you guys but from amazon themselves so feel free to use those links when you're shopping Today, the 4th of September 2020, I did a live stream of Microsoft Flight Simulator using this build. Although the stream was in 720p, which I found strange, maybe I didn't check my settings when I installed OBS, the stream looks good and if you guys are interested in seeing what streaming looks like with a Ryzen 5 3600 and a 1660 Super, check out my stream. I will link it somewhere in the description down below. Throughout the video, you guys would have noticed an airplane in the background of the video. If you guys are interested in seeing how I crashed that airplane, check out the link in the description down below. Now, if you guys are interested in RC aviation or flight simulation, check out my YouTube channel, FSX Tout. If you guys are interested in tech, photography, videography, whatever, subscribe to this channel and I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.